welcome to our second day of our conference. I hope you had a fantastic evening yesterday with friends while you're here in Sydney and I hope there were no casualties from the hungry hippo. Um, in terms of today, we, I think we've got a fantastic um, opening session for the day with some amazing speakers, but I think the whole um, conference um, including concurrent sessions just look incredible and it's just you just sit wondering how I can be in two places at once so it's uh, there are some amazing talks taking place but today's session we open um, with really a bit of a focus around um, media and behavior change resilience and engagement of workforce so it is um, my great pleasure to open the day with starting with Ian Miller. And Ian Miller will be speaking to us today about what is the role of social media in clinical practice, something that I think is critically important now and for our future. Ian has worked in an emergency department in Canberra for the last 34 years. He's certainly a pioneer for many of us. He has practiced in a diverse range of positions, including clinical development nurse, a clinical nurse consultant role, and e-health project manager. But of all the roles he's undertaken, he's most proud of being beside a clinical, uh, being a bedside clinical nurse. Ian began writing online back around 2000 with a website called impactednurse.com, which I'd recommend any to have a look at. He now writes a blog over at the NursePath blog as well, curating online content he hopes he might be of professional interest to others. Strategically uh, tracking into hospital pillow movements and mostly being deeply inspired by other nurses he comes across in his social media feeds. Ian lives with his partner Kelly and their dog Juno. Could we welcome Ian to the stage? Thanks. Good morning everyone. What is the role of social media in clinical practice? Well, let me just say before I start that standing here this morning is absolutely nothing like being on Facebook. Uh, just a second. Oh, that's better. Thank you, Kelly. First of all, I'd like to thank the Senior Organising Committee for inviting me along here this morning to talk to you. Um, very, some very personal views about social media and clinical practice, and there is a language advisory later on. For those who don't know me, my name is Ian Miller, and as just introduced, I work at the Emergency Department at Canberra Hospital, and as a disclaimer up front, I'll say that nothing I'm about to say express, expresses the views of my employer. Uh, there's the Emergency Department where I work. Uh, I've been writing online since back in 2000, first on a website called impactednurse.com, and this was way back before uh, social media was even a thing, and even back then, you know, individual websites were only just barely a thing. Later on, I wrote in its sequel, the nursepath.blog, and that's path as in garden path, not path as in pathology. Much more recently, I've been active on social media platforms including Twitter, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Google Plus and LinkedIn and Snapchat and blah, blah, blah. I by no means consider myself an expert in social media, but I am a nurse who has been immersed in social media for quite some time. Okay then, so I think we're in for a real treat over the next couple of the days. Who went to the workshops yesterday? Yeah, Kelly told me they were really, really good. Um, once a year, we get to come to a conference such as this. Now, if we are lucky and we save up our pennies and we're on particularly good terms with our unit managers, we may get to go to more conferences, but usually this is like a once a year deal. We get to come along and soak up the creativity and the acumen and the articulatoriness and the passion and the bloody hard work that our colleagues have put in over the last 12 months. We get to come and see the latest practice guidelines and developments to challenge our thinking and guide our own clinical practice. Uh, we get to come along and update or augment our clinical skills. We get to come along and grab hold of some of those precious CPD hours before APRA comes looking for us. And we get to experience that very real fear of missing out when it's coming time to decide which one of the concurrent sessions we are going to attend. But I think there's something else going on here, something that is at least as important and probably, in my opinion, even more important. Not that. 
I'm talking about connecting, something to do with sharing our stories and talking about the things we see here, something to do with supporting each other and something to do with realising that the experiences we have as emergency department nurses, the 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows are by and large shared experiences. Now these are experiences that glue us together into something very special, something social. So once a year we get to come along to a conference like this and see reflected back at us by our peers in this room who we are as emergency nurses. And the question I ask is, is once a year enough? I think social media gives us a very powerful tool to experience all these things I've just been talking about all of the time. Now, social media isn't everything, and there's a lot of things I don't like about social media, and it's a sharp edge tool that we must handle with care. It doesn't replace this, and it doesn't replace this, and it doesn't replace these, and it absolutely doesn't replace a strong, robust work environment with good leadership, good educational faculty, and supportive colleagues in real life. But we can access this stuff every time we swipe our iPhones, every time we open our laptops, every time we go for a coffee break at work <laughs> or go for a dinner break, every time we're trying to get to sleep after that shift from hell. Ian, will you please turn off that bloody iPhone? Every time we sneak off to the staff toilet for no other reason than to just have 10 minutes peace and quiet amongst the chaos. So I think uh, social media is useful for a lot more than just catching up with what our colleagues are up to after work and sharing funny nursing memes. I think we can use social media in ways that are professionally meaningful. So as nurses, we love acronyms. So I've come up with my own acronym to explore the domains where I believe social media is particularly meaningful for us. Now those domains are study, practice, engagement, and well-being. Spew. <laughs> Hashtag spew, and it even comes with its own emoji. <laughs> so I think most of the things we're going to see here over the next couple of days are going to fall into these domains. So I'm just going to crack them open quickly. First of all, study. Our workplaces are incredibly busy environments in constant states of change and flux, and it's really hard for us as nurses to just keep up with what's going on around us. And when we do try and keep up, it becomes very quickly apparent that the stuff that we're looking for, that we really need, is either really difficult to find or is locked away from out, you know, out, of, out of our reach. So how many times do we, are we on Google and we find a really interesting journal article at home, we go, oh, the abstract looks exactly what I'm looking for, and as soon as we try and dig a little bit deeper, ba bow, access denied. And when we can access this material, how many of us actually have the time to do so? We come home from work after that shift from hell, we crack open a bottle of wine, we snuggle up next to the one we love, and we pull out a whole bunch of journal articles. No, we don't. We have far more important things to be doing with our time. <laughs> this causes some problems. One of them is continuity. So in our emergency department, we do things this way. Over in your emergency department over there, you do things that way. At the moment over here in our emergency department, we're spending all this time trying to sort up this new U-Butte practice policy wheel thingy. Unbeknownst to us, over in your emergency department over there, you already developed that wheel six months ago. You rolled it out, you implemented it, you evaluated it. You published all the, you got all the supporting documentation for it and a couple of nurses even got it published in a journal article. Another problem is around lag. So there's always this big lag between new research and uh, evidence coming out and it actually being implemented at the bedside on our patients where it counts. Now these are organisational issues around change, but for us as nurses it's really hard to drive change in positive directions when we just don't know what we don't know. Luckily for us, there are people who really jam on this stuff. There are people in this room who do fall asleep with journal articles across their faces. Um, and there are people that can do the research far cleverer than me. There are other people far cleverer than me that can critically appraise this research, that can triage the research, that can extract useful information and share it with us in ways that are meaningful to us. <laughs> so let's have a look at practice. Social media gives us the opportunity to explore our practice together. 
We can look at what we do, we can look at why we do it, and we can look, importantly, how it feels when we're doing it. Now, as soon as we start doing this in a public space, here there'd be dragons. So I'm gonna talk a bit about dragon safety in just a moment. Engagement, now this is what social media does best. It allows us to cross-pollinate our ideas and exchange things. It also allows us to break down this mindset that we all are in these individual autonomous silos, where the truth is that our patient's experience is that we are deeply interconnected, interpenetrating continuums of care, and that's what they experience. So here's an example of engagement. It's common practice for us to fast our patients from 12 midnight prior to having surgery, despite the research no longer supporting this. Now recently in uh, Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne began letting their kids have clear fluids up to one hour before surgery. Now they made this neat infographic which they shared on their own social media streams. I had no idea about this until Marsha sent me the infographic. I thought, that, that looks pretty cool. So I put it up on my own page. Now 1.6 thousand people also thought that infographic was pretty cool. 395 people just thought it was so cool that they would share it on their own social media streams. And 263 people actually had something to say about that infographic. And importantly, not, were, not only were people talking about it, but people were reading other people's comments and then engaging in conversation with them. That is engagement. It gives us a very powerful space where we can question the status quo, where we can reflect on our current practice, where we can challenge existing dogma, and where we can be engines of transformation in our workplace, and where we can support each other, which brings me to my fourth uh, area of spew, and that is well-being. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that nursing is a tough gig, and I think emergency department nursing is exponentially so. And we spend a lot of time concerned about the quality of care we give our patients, yet so often we don't extend that same commitment to caring for ourselves and caring for our colleagues. We fail to realise the importance of putting me first so that we can put our patients the big second. And I don't care how hardened or battle-weary emergency department nurse you are, I think we can all do with a good hug sometimes. So how many people in the room know what that is? Okay, so there's a few, so that's engagement. Put your hands up again, if you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, look at these people with their hands up, go and see them in the break, and they are going to show you what that is. <laughs> now, if you don't, can't find them, come and see me, and I will show you, and I will give you a badge afterwards. So all the time on my social media feeds, I get direct messages. And far more than nurses wanting to know about education, nurses are wanting to know about issues around personal well-being. And they're including things about resiliency, about compassion fatigue, about burnout. So many nurses seem to be depressed. There's a lot of nurses that are you know, considering self-harm and suicide. So these are matters that need to be addressed. Bullying seems to be still endemic in our workplace and is really damaging our profession. Workloads, whether we're talking about nurse to patient ratios or just the general operational tempo that we find ourselves in each day. Debriefing, many nurses want to have more space and more time to, to be able to be critically debriefed uh, after critical incidents. And super importantly, nursing shoes. Finding the correct shoe seems to be really important to people. <laughs> so they're my four domains of spew. Now, it's all well and good all having this lovely spewiness and interconnectedness and coming along to conferences such as this. These things should be making us better nurses and they should be improving the patient care that we deliver. But there's another problem. There's an elephant in the room. And that is that that container that we work in in so many instances just makes it so goddamn difficult to deliver that quality care to our patients. Now, after 34 years working in the emergency department, and this is my personal view, I believe that container is, and what's the word I'm looking for here? Suboptimal. Now, it's not suboptimal like this because there would be no hope, but it is suboptimal like this. And just like VT, as nurses, we have the skills and the knowledge and the capabilities and the passion and the energy to unsuboptimalize it. As yet, unlike VT, there is no universal algorithm to help us do this. 
but it's something we need to build and I think social media gives us a platform to build that algorithm. We, with social media we can help to build a defibrillator. And I think we need to defibrillate it because we all know what happens to VT if we don't do something quickly. So let's have a little look at defibrillator safety. If you're going to be active on social media as a nurse, you absolutely must know the rules. You must read your, your local organisation's social media policies and guidelines at least once, no matter how boring they may be. If you, if you don't have a guideline or you can't find them, there are quite a few guidelines online. APRA have one. It's totally sucky and not worth reading. Uh, Flinders University have a really good one. Uh, A&MF have a really good one as well. Once you start reading about all the rules about behaving as a professional nurse on social media, you probably will never want to be a professional nurse on social media. You won't want to dip your toe into it for fear of being deregistered and or crucified. But I think it's important that we do so. And so I've distilled four things to be safe on social media. Don't worry, there's no acronym for this. So these are the four things you, you need to know to be safe. Number one, there is absolutely no difference to the way you should be behaving as a professional nurse on social media and the way you should be behaving as a decent human being. Number two, do not post anything online that you would not be prepared to print out and stick up in the wall in your tea room. And then take a photo of that, blow it up into poster size, put it up in the foyer of your hospital, turn off all the lights and put one spotlight on it. Now, if you're not prepared to do that with every post or comment you make on social media, you shouldn't be doing it. Number three, never breach confidentiality. Not your own confidentiality, not your patient's confidentiality, not your colleague's confidentiality, ever, ever, ever. And it's not as clear cut as that. It's more subtle and you need to think about what that means. Finally, the internet is forever. Here's a screenshot from my first website, impactednurse.com. Now this is a story, in fact it's the second story I ever wrote and posted. It's a story about a patient I looked after and I crossed the line of confidentiality in that story. Now my website is long since gone, that post is long since deleted. The other day I was very quickly able to go online and take a screenshot of it. It will be there forever and I can never make it go away. It's, so you must really think hard everything you are posting online, it will be there forever. Having said all that, as uh, Professor Triggs was talking about yesterday, it is so important that everyone in this room realises that we do have a voice and what we have to say does matter. So, as we sit back and prepare to soak up this oncoming awesomeness over the next couple of days, just have a think about all the hard work that your colleagues have put into bringing this conference to you. The presenters, the people behind the presenters, uh, and the organisers as well. Have a think about what this means to you. Have a think about the information and also the interaction and how important that is. I've been asked to come here this morning because I have a little bit of an influence on social media, probably just because I've been banging away at this for so long. But uh, I believe there's people in this room that have far more important gifts to offer on social media than I do. And I would like to encourage them to consider ways they may be able to do that, whether it's starting up a website, opening up a Facebook page, getting active on Twitter, these things are easy to do, they're free. And they do make a difference. And it is so important that we have a strong voice so that we can make better care to our patients, build better nurses and help repair the broken container. So that's all I have to say this morning. Hashtag thank you very much.